بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ہیلو اینڈ ویلکم ٹو دی کورس آن آپٹیمائزیشن دس کورس کوڈ از ایم ٹی ایچ تھری سیون فور اینڈ اٹس اے کورس فار ایم ایس سی میتھمیٹکس اسٹوڈنٹس ایٹ ورچوئل کیمپس آف کام سیٹس انسٹیٹیوٹ آف انفارمیشن ٹیکنالوجی اسلام آباد رائٹ سو وی ول بریفلی ڈسکس وٹ از دس کورس آل اباؤٹ بٹ فرسٹ اے بریف انٹروڈکشن آف آف یور انسٹرکٹر So my name is Dr. Muhammad Fazil Anwar and I am an assistant professor at Department of Mathematics, Comsats Institute of Information Technology, Islamabad campus. Okay, and I've done my PhD in mathematics from University of York, UK, right? So my specific area of expertise is algebra um, and uh, I will be talking about the course of optimization with you throughout the Uh, throughout the course of this semester uh, well uh, this course is is a fairly basic course it's it's part of your MSc degree uh, but it's not it's not a very very hard co course to be honest um, it's uh, you can probably say that most of this course uh, has been covered in in different areas of mathematics that you have already studied um, What's the purpose of teaching optimization then? Um, very roughly, very, very roughly, you can probably say that the purpose of teaching optimization to you is uh, most of the time the students ask the questions, where is the application of mathematics in real life? And um, we do not really talk about applications of mathematics in, in those mathematics course, courses because our aim, our objective, our main theme of those courses is not to discuss the applications, but the theme aim is to teach you mathematics, mathematics as a subject, right? Not, not their, its applications. So optimization, in this course of optimization, uh, you will study the applications of different areas of mathematics, different subjects of mathematics, like calculus, like linear algebra, and, and some others that you have studied before, uh, we will discuss their applications in real life in this course, okay? So you will uh, see many problems arising from real life, and then uh, you will be asked to formulate the problem mathematically, and then you'll be asked to solve them, right? So that's, that's the main aim of this course. But this is, uh, all of this course is definitely non, not known to you. We will uh, develop certain new techniques uh, from literature uh, that will be entirely new to you and we will apply them to real life problems. So this is, this is not a very mathematical course in nature. Uh, this is more of an application course if you like. So if you are, if you are interested in application side of mathematics, I'm sure you will enjoy this course a lot. Okay, so uh, let's let's briefly move on and mm, throughout this course, this is mainly mainly an introductory lecture, right? So in this lecture, we we will mainly discuss what will be in this course and what sort of problems we'll be dealing with, what are our limitations, and uh, throughout this semester, what we will be talking about. So most of this this lecture will be about this, right? So some uh, a part of this lecture will will um, also set up some some rules some background for for the rest of this course right so let's let's move on okay so you will of course be interested to know some books right so here are a couple of books that you can you can uh, get off the market they are available um, they they are fairly basic books right so they are not they are not very hard there are certain other books as well so these are not the only books that you you can consult there will be there can be other books and there will be some other books that you can you can consult right so most of the optimization theory books have the similar contents and similar material uh, just just the way the author writes it is usually different um, also uh, you will be provided some handouts some lecture notes so you can consult them as well uh, but well, of course, book is always always better than any handouts, any notes, because that's that's the complete package. Okay, 
So first book is, is your textbook. So that's also the book that we usually teach in, uh, in ComSets, Institute of Information Technology, not the virtual campus. Okay, so it's called Introduction to Optimization Theory. Introduction to Optimization Theory by uh, Byron S. Gottfried and Joel Wiseman. Okay, so these are the two authors of this book. Um, this is this is a fairly basic books writ book written in in very plain English. Okay, so uh, it has a lot of story. It's not very mathematical. It it has all the mathematics stuff as well, but it it does contain uh, the introductory stuff that you would need and and lot of motivational discussions as well. Uh, second book. Um, is optimization theory and practice okay uh, it's my Mohan C Joshi um, this is this is more mathematical if you like okay so this this book will contain all the mathematic mathematical things that we need uh, even the basic ones from calculus and linear algebra and other areas of mathematics that you will need and also uh, this book uh, uh, then concentrates on the on the methods uh, that we will develop for for this course and then picks out individual problems and then just applies uh, those method to those the, to the problems that you have picked right so it's it's a very mathematical and very to the point book uh, there are there are many other books right so uh, there is there is a very famous book as well uh, it's called an introduction to optimization theory right so that's that's another book you can you can maybe get off the market so whichever you can basically find and also the lecture notes right so uh, it's it's just a matter of preference the 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 way of writing of the author if you if it suits you then that's that's the book for you but most of the material that I'll cover in this course will be from from your textbook okay so uh, you, if you want one book that is that is the main reference for you, you can just basically get that book. Okay, right. So you are uh, probably you have done many courses before doing starting the course of optimization. So you are familiar that at Comsat's virtual campus, um, how the marking and grading system works. So there will be three credit hours for this course. So cre three credit hours means three teaching hours per week. Okay. So you will have basically two classes per per week. Okay. So total marks are 100 uh, for this subject, and they are they are divided into into certain parts and certain areas. So there are two sessional exams in the semester, as you are you are aware. So first sessional will be 10 marks and second sessional will be 15 marks. Uh, first sessional and second sessional will be conducted uh, during your semester, right? So after a certain period of time. Okay, so there will be at least three quizzes and three assignments as well, right? So you have to submit them. And uh, there are 25 marks for these quizzes and assignments. So it's, it's usually up to the instructor, but maybe 10 marks for the quizzes, 15 for assignments. And 15 for quizzes and three for uh, 10 for assignments, right? So it's it can change, okay? And the terminal exam, the final exam of the semester, will be of 50 marks, right? So uh, if you uh, some passing marks in ComSats are usually 50 marks, right? So if you do not concentrate on during your semester, right? So you have already lost 50 points, 50 marks. And the only uh, marks you have available are 50 marks for your terminal, right? So it's usually very, very hard to get 50 out of 50 in terminal exam, right? So if you want to do well, you have to concentrate throughout the semester. It's not an annual system. It's a semester system. So it, it, you cannot just work for a couple of weeks at the end of the semester and get, get the good marks. You have to be on your toes for, for the whole of the semester if you really want to do well in, in this course, right? So in any course for that matter. Okay, so this is this is fairly basic information that is already familiar to you, but just to reiterate. Okay, so course outline. What will be in this course? Okay, so here are the topics. I know that they are not familiar to you. This is, this is a fact. Uh, but just to 
just to let you know about the names right so what what will be the names of the topics that you will be talking about in this semester you will probably get a detailed course outline this is not very detailed this is just just an upshot if you like and so uh, when you get the detailed course outline you will see what what are the detailed topics in in each of this so uh, introduction to optimization what is optimization right so we should know what is the definition of optimization what are we trying to do okay so um, just uh, in last few minutes i i said that uh, in optimization we apply mathematical concepts to real life problems okay but the trouble is uh, that a, a real life problem uh, might not look very mathematical so we have to first transform into the language of mathematics and then we'll solve it right so um, sort of very roughly the the way of transforming real life problems into mat into mathematics is is called mathematical models details are coming um, there'll be some variables and objective functions uh, again uh, details very coming very very soon so what what are what are these uh, we will we will talk about them our are multi factor objectives uh, stationary values and extrema relative and absolute extrema some words might be familiar to you from calculus uh, i hope they are i hope because you have done the course of calculus surely you have done it so uh, stationary points and extrema and relative and absolute extrema they should be familiar to you so we will we will again talk about them uh, in this course with with res reference to our problems and um, you you will be able to understand why are we we discussing them in this course right so uh, they have they have a certain sense um, to to the relevance of our course okay um, then finally in on this slide you have convex concave and unimodal functions what are they again some words familiar from calculus right so they they should be uh, fairly familiar to you uh, what are constraints well that's that's an that's another word uh, if you just look at the um, english meaning of this word that you would probably say that constraints are some conditions okay some restrictions okay so some restrictions that that are applied to uh, a real life problem because well uh, we are not very very free to choose uh, choose everything in real life there are always some constraints some conditions some uh, some basic conditions that uh, that our problem have to obey we cannot go out of out of those conditions all the details are coming um what are mathematical programming problems uh, again uh, these this this uh, word programming mathematical programming uh, you might uh, relate it to to the programming that you do in a programming language um, it has some relation uh, but it's also slightly different as well uh, one dimensional multi dimensional functions again may be familiar to you uh, what are lagrange multipliers and uh, unconstrained optimization and linear programming so these are some very bold topics if you like um, just just the headings if you like of of this of the contents of this course um and there are there are lot of details in them uh, which we will discuss as and when we get to them okay right so so let's move on so let's let's briefly start uh, our introduction to this course right so uh, what is in this course so here are some of some of the things we we want to talk about today so what introduction what is optimization well uh, surely we we should know that uh, why do we need optimization that's another interesting question so uh, we if we are studying a course and we are basically saying this is an application course so maybe maybe we should be able to relate it to our real life let's let's see how can we do that um what are some some of the important real life optimization problems that we want to solve using mathematics okay so that's that's a catchy word a key word right so whenever we say 
apply mathematics to our problems, our real life problems. That's, that's the essence, that's the core of, of studying science and mathematics. Do something, do something for humanity, do something for, for our real life problems, do something for our personal problems, do, our, do something about, about the problems that we face at our workplace. Right? So these are the things that if mathematics can help us with them, then probably uh, we can conv convince the world that mathematics is useful and it's important, right? So every every other person in this in this world thinks that uh, mathematics is is hard. Well, mm, maybe it is, but uh, not quite as hard as as people think, right? So if if you learn to work in mathematics and learn to love it, then uh, you have a motivation. Then probably mathematics is not that hard. But the trouble is. We never have enough motivation to work to work in mathematics, right? So in the end, when when we get bored and when we don't have a motivation, uh, we say that mathematics is hard, which is of course not quite true. Well, it is it is true in some cases. Uh, some areas of mathematics may be hard. Again, it's relative. Hard is relative because, uh, well, if you work in that area and you know the area well, then you will probably not say it's hard, right? So if you look from outside, everything will look hard to you, right? So that's, that's the main, main core, main aim. So we want to motivate mathematics. If, uh, we want to talk about mathematics that we can talk to a layman, for example, right? So this is the kind of, kind of mathematics, not the kind of mathematics, but the kind of problems that are understandable to layman. But uh, if we don't know mathematics, then we, of course, won't be able to solve them as effectively um, as uh, using mathematics, right? So that, that's our aim, goal. Uh, what are mathematical models that, that's some detail coming up soon. Uh, what are variable and objective functions? And if we get time, we will also talk about, probably talk about multi-factor objectives, right? So this is... This, these are all the planned topics for today. We might not get through all of them, but we will try and do get through all of them, right? So let's look at some introduction of this course. Word optimization. Optimization, right? So optimization is, you can probably uh, very roughly say, it's choosing the best possible option choosing the best possible option. So there are certain options available to you. Every option will have, will have its plus and minus points. So you have to choose the best possible options. So best possible option for us would be the option which has the most advantages and least disadvantages. And that option should also satisfy our needs that's that's the important thing so whichever option we choose uh, that should be best possible in every way right? so that it should fulfill all our needs uh, needs of the needs of the R needs of the problem uh, it should also um, maybe require less time maybe have more advantages have less disadvantages uses less resources um, uses less money let's say for example Okay, so all of these constraints, uh, these conditions, if if an option, if an option fulfills our objectives, and that option is best possible among among all the available options, so we would definitely, definitely like to have that, right? So optimizing, optimizing a problem or its solution, is finding the best possible solution to your problem finding the best possible solution to your problem. That's optimization. Okay, so every problem can be solved in different ways. Uh, there is always a kind of a donkey way of doing a problem, right? So um, you go from point A to point B, uh, well, you just start working and you will get from point A to point B eventually. Uh, you don't care about which route you take. You don't care about what time you start working and and anything right so 
uh, you just have to get from point A to point B. That's that's kind of a very naive way of, of doing anything. That's not how we work in real life, right? If we want to get from point A to point B in real life, we will think about which route we want to take, right? So maybe we have less time. We want the quickest route. Maybe we want to save our fuel. We want to take the shortest route. So all of these things are important in real life that whatever options available to us, we always want to pick out the best possible. Okay, so the definition of optimization is written here. So I'm saying optimization is the art of obtaining best policies to satisfy certain objectives while at the same time sat satisfying fixed requirements. Okay. So uh, it's, it's a very uh, precise and very complete statement if you like. Um, so it's an art, that's, that's a debatable word. Um, art, well we, you can probably say we are not students of art. So we are, we are saying optimization is an art, so it's probably not a science. Well, that's, that's open for debate and question. But in this course, I'll convince you that optimization is more science than art. I'll try and convince you. Uh, but we, we, can, we will debate uh, this, this word in, in a moment. Uh, so we want to obtain the best policies to satisfy certain objectives, right? So we always have an objective in mind. We want to go from one place to another, that to, so we have an objective. So we want to go to point A to point B. But our restriction is, uh, it's already 9.15, okay? So I want to get there by 9.30. So I've only got 15 minutes. So what do I have to do to get from this point to A point to B point? in 15 minutes, then I'll probably choose the quickest possible route. That probably may not be the shortest route because shortest route might be crowded. It might have traffic on it, right? So all of these things uh, will, will be under consideration. So I want to go from A to B, but I want to get there in 15 minutes. So I want to choose the quickest possible option. So my objective is go from point A to point B, but go uh, my fixed requirement is I want to get there in just 15 minutes okay so that's the so I want to obtain the best possible route so that that's a that's the best policy um, in this case which satisfy my objectives and it also satisfies my requirement okay so there is only one objective and one requirement okay so uh, let's look at another scenario maybe I have a pro yeah, or you have a production factory okay so in a production factory, uh, there are a couple of um, big uh, factors, for example. There are small factors, which we will talk about later, but there are two major factors. First one is cost, second one is production, third one is profit, okay? So uh, it's always the aim of a factory owner that he wants to minimize his cost, he wants to maximize his production and he also wants to maximize his profits okay so there are there are three objectives here he wants to minimize his cost he also wants to minimize um, his he also wants to maximize his production and he also wants to maximize his profits so there are three objectives but there are of course some constraints for example um, he cannot operate the factory for 24 hours. He does not have enough labor. So that's his constraint. His fixed uh, requirement that uh, he cannot ha hire more than 50 people. So that's his fixed requirement. It cannot change. He only has 50 people. So those 50 people have to work and uh, he also has fixed revenue, right? He doesn't have infinite amount of money. So to buy, for example, the raw material or pay the bills or pay the taxes. So he only has a um, right, finite amount of money to, to spend. So that's another condition that uh, we have to take care of. So we cannot just say, uh, well, you want to maximize profit and maximize, uh, maximize your production. Just operate the factory for 24 hours and hire infinitely many people and just invi invest infinite amount of money and you will get 
a lot of profit. This is not how it works. Even if we if we recommend that um, the all of the production he has to sell that, right? So uh, there is not a demand of of any any certain uh, object or any certain product. There is not an infinite demand of any product in the market, right? So demand is always finite and there are always competitors. So we have to take care of all these requirements and still fulfill his objectives, right? So that's, that's another, another sort of optimization problem, if you like, right? So we want to choose the best possible option uh, which satisfies our objectives and it also satisfy our fixed requirements already fixed we cannot change them right so in this case for example in the factory running case uh, what is the best policy you should tell him uh, what are the number of optimal number of hours that the factory should run that he he gets the uh, production required production and he also gets the maximum profits right so that's that's the best policy for him for the factory owner right so um, in this course for example uh, you will see some surprising things um, it's a general belief uh, that uh, with if you work without mathematics which we we usually work in in business uh, so if you work without mathematics the factory owner will say run my factory for 24 hours and have three shifts um, and uh, I will excel and my profits will be high and everything in this course for example I will show you many examples in this case the optimal the maximum profit solution is not that you run for the factory for 24 hours uh, this is not the best solution because more you run the factory more overhead cost for example you have to pay the workers you have to pay the electricity bill you have to for example pay the gas bills you have to pay tax more more tax right so all of these things taken into uh, into consideration most of the time the best possible solution would not be to run the factory for 24 hours and 30 days of, of, of the week this will not usually this will not be the best possible solution okay so that's kind of raises an eyebrow doesn't it that our, our uh, usual beliefs of of business the way we run our business can basically change and we can maximize our profits and we can maximize our production and we can maximize our business revenues if you if we use some some even some very basic mathematics right so after uh, studying this course you will definitely be able to able to solve some some of the basic problems that that you will face in real life uh, let's let's hope so right so that's that's the some of the explanation of the first statement let's look at the second statement that I'm I'm writing here so effective decision making both in personal and professional capacity okay effective decision making that's that's the important part so every effective decision uh, will always uh, be an advantage to you and you will also minimize the risk of disadvantage that's an effective decision isn't it right so um, effective decision in personal life well you you might have very very small decisions like going from one place to another which is the best possible route that's that's a very uh, fairly um, basic problem right so that we uh, that we face in in everyday life right but um, if we make a bad decision in our personal life like in this case uh, it's not disastrous we will get late by let's say 10 to 15 minutes maybe if we choose a different route and maybe burn a little bit more fuel uh, but it's not disastrous in in the sense that uh, we we don't lose too much but we also have to make effective decisions in our professional capacity right so if we are a decision maker in a company and we make one bad decision well that's probably a career ruined because every decision in in our professional life has consequences right so if we make one bad decision that's that's uh, that's is usually disastrous right for for the company uh, if if a, a bad decision is made at at the top level
right? So effective decision making in professional capacity is very, very important. So whenever you make an effective decision in a professional capacity, you have to take all the factors into consideration and then come up with, with the best possible decision uh, that, that suits your needs, right? So you cannot just make the best possible decision. It also has to suit your needs because um, if, if a solution or if, um, if a decision doesn't even satisfy your needs, why would you make that decision? So you have to make a decision that satisfies your needs but also, also minimizes the risk of, of, for example, disaster or minimizes the risk of being it a bad decision. Okay? So um, mathematics and optimization will help you make better decisions in both personal and professional capacity. Uh, we will, of course, see how, how this will happen. Okay, then uh, last uh, statement on this slide I'm writing is choosing the best possible option. That's, that's uh, how kind of how I roughly defined optimization. So choose the best option among the options available to you. Okay, so that's, that's another, another uh, theme of optimization. Okay, so optimization is an art of decision making if like. Optimization is an art of decision making. But this art has been transformed, uh, most of this art has been transformed into mathematics. So uh, as soon as your problem uh, comes into mathematics and you solve it mathematically and your decision comes through math mathematics, then it becomes a science. So we are in this course, we will transform this art of decision making in many cases into, into a scientific decision making done using mathematics. So it's an art, uh, but it can, can also be studied uh, using science, using mathematics in this case, for example. Okay? So that's, that's our aim, that's our goal for this course. Okay, introduction, uh, some, some further uh, topics in that. Um, we will also, as, as I've just uh, iterated, that uh, we will also learn how to transform certain practical problems, certain everyday problems, real life problems into mathematics, right? So we will first have to transform the problem into language of mathematics if you really want to solve it using mathematics, right? So it's, it's kind of common sense, isn't it? Okay, so we will also study, develop, some techniques, mathematical techniques that will help the, us solve these problems. Once the problem is converted into mathematics, we will then um, use our mathematical knowledge and concepts, uh, some already known concepts and knowledge, some new concepts and knowledge uh, to solve those problems that we have just transformed into mathematics. Okay. Um, also, um, we uh, I have explained this uh, a couple of times now, but again, just, just to emphasize that in this course, uh, we will uh, look into some concepts of calculus and linear algebra, some other branches of mathematics as well, uh, but mostly from calculus and linear algebra, and even real analysis as well, um, and um, many other areas of mathematics basically. Um, and we will try and apply them to real life. Right. So if you go back uh, a couple of steps, uh, we have transformed a problem into mathematics. Now we have to solve it, right? So we, have, we will only solve it using uh, the existing knowledge of mathematics that we have, right? So we will use that knowledge from calculus and linear algebra to solve those problems. Uh, all of this is going to become clear very, very soon to you, okay? Um, so in short, we are trying to make the art of effective decision making into a science, into mathematics, right? So we want to convert the art of effective decision making into mathematics. Um, of course, this cannot be done every time. So we cannot basically uh, convert every single problem into mathematics and then solve it. There are, there are limitations on us. Maybe we can convert the problem into mathematics, but solving it may require uh, more, mm, a lot of time, a uh, huge computer machine that might not be available to us.
So there are certain limitations on our problem. Maybe the uh, the parameters of the problem are are so so many that we cannot really uh, handle handle it in mathematics right so there are there are always constraints not every problem can be solved using optimization in mathematics but many can be solved so um, the if we can at least resolve some of our problems then even then it's it's a very good starting point right so here we go some of the problems uh, that we face um, in real life and uh, why are the optimization problems so first one is there is a company for example it makes canned food right so you usually go to a supermarket and get some canned food for example there are canned beans there are canned fruits um, and even some cooked canned um, uh, f let's say food so all of these are available in the market so let's say there is a company uh, which makes these these food okay so the uh, company has only two food processing plants uh, there is one in Karachi and there is another one in Peshawar there are there are only two but of course the company operates throughout the country right so uh, Karachi and Peshawar are the only food processing plants but the company has to distribute all its uh, its food to all of all of the country right so it has four distributing warehouses first one is in Lahore Quetta Islamabad and Multan food is usually not um, transferred straight from from the processing plant to 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 let's say your supermarkets or your shops um, it usually goes to distribution warehouses right so it this company this company we, that we are considering has four of these warehouses uh, so in these cities for example right so uh, there are a few important questions here first question is um, right so food is being made in Karachi and Peshawar so there will be demand for for the canned food in the country okay so um, Lahore, Quetta, Islamabad, Multan, these are your distribution points. So how much food should you ship f to all these four places? So you cannot basically say, I have made 100 units, let say, let's send 25 units to each place. That's not the way you should work because maybe uh, Islamabad has more demand for canned food and Quetta has uh, hardly any demand for canned food. So you have to uh, take care of this consideration that what is the demand for for your your food so then you have to carefully consider the demand so that's that's your fixed uh, requirement that what is the demand of your food your canned food right so then you have to uh, carefully send that amount of canned food to these warehouses okay then um, there there are also uh, other factors you must consider for example uh, if you want to send food from Karachi to let's say Islamabad it will take a lot of time it will also uh, cost you more in transportation cost right but maybe if you want to send food from Karachi to Quetta uh, the distance is is uh, relatively small uh, it will probably cost you less in transportation cost so you have to be careful uh, how much you want to spend on transportation cost right so uh, every uh, destination in this list will have different transportation cost okay so you have to you have to take care of the resources that you have the money you can spend on transportation cost because no one will transport the food for you for free so you have you will always have to pay the transportation cost so if you you have only a fixed amount of money that you want to spend on transportation cost then you may you have to be careful that you have a demand and then you have a fixed transportation cost amount so you have to maximize uh, the uh, fulfillment of your demand while um, 
making sure that you do not uh, spend more than you have okay um, also um, there are two plants Karachi and Peshawa so each plant has a different capacity uh, to produce let's say food uh, maybe Karachi uh, plant is bigger so it has more capacity you can uh, you can make more canned food in Karachi in the Peshawar plant is maybe smaller so you can make less canned food so if you want to uh, let's say you will say Islamabad is very close to Peshawar but Peshawar is a small plant so Peshawar cannot fulfill all the requirements of Islamabad so then you have to go back to Karachi so maybe you want to say even Lahore is close to Peshawar so maybe I want to serve Lahore from Peshawar but this may not be possible because the plant may be so small that it cannot serve, serve these two cities so all of these uh, fixed requirements on you um, are already there so you have to you have to make sure that you uh, fulfill your production uh, demands you also ship the appropriate appropriate amount of food while making sure that you do not spend more than the transportation cost that you have and also uh, you have to make sure that you do not ask for more food from a plant than it can actually produce so there is there is there are all these conditions that you have to take care of if you want if you want to uh, run your company properly if you do not ship enough food to Islamabad and there is more demand then there will be of course shortage uh, in Islamabad for of your food and of course you won't be able to sell your food and you won't be able to get profits because there are no revenues there are no profits because you are not selling anything so you have to fulfill the demands while working in your in your given parameters you cannot exceed your parameters whatever requirements you have you have to fulfill them while there are there are the constraints on you you cannot bypass them right so that's 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 an optimization problem that's a transportation problem that you have to uh, best use the best possible way to use your resources you want to maximize your profits you want to choose the best possible route um, so that your transportation cost is minimum and all this there are multi multi-factor uh, optimization here right so you want to optimize different things while you also want uh, you want to maximize different things and you also want to minimize certain things right so you want to minimize your cost um, and and some other factors but you want to maximize your profits okay you want to maximize your revenues for example right so all of these things should be taken into consideration if you want to solve this problem but this is not this is not a, um, a problem created by mathematics this is a this is a usual problem that people face in in real life if if you run a company you will be familiar with this problem uh, but unfortunately uh, we seldom use mathematics to solve these problems uh, in in Pakistan we just use the uh, maybe the hit and trial method right so let's let's uh, Islamabad uh, people have more demand let's send everything to Islamabad and then forget about the rest because they are not important customers this is this is totally wrong policy for any business every single customer is important you have to fulfill the demand of every single customer of your most most of the production uh, maybe let's say Karachi is the hub of all the production and Karachi is very far from many cities cities of Pakistan so everything gets shipped from Karachi to other places and then uh, uh, usually there is there is a shortage of, of something so that's because we never use mathematics we, we just say well we, we have worked this way for years and years let's keep working on it uh, if you have worked on something for years and years and it's the wrong thing that's probably not the thing to continue okay so uh, when when you are done with this course uh, we will look at one solution of this particular problem maybe may not be in a very general setting but you will be able to solve solve this problem in in some specific settings okay so this is one one problem of of an optimization 
uh, optimization problem that you will talk about. Okay, so optimization um, again, uh, if you look at uh, in the concept context of this problem, it's maximizing and minimizing certain things. Optimization is maximizing and minimizing th certain things. Okay, so that's that's probably what you will call optimization. Okay, so you have to maximize certain things while you ha also have to minimize certain things. So th both of these things should have to be taken into account. Okay, so let's look at another problem another engineering di design problem uh, which is again uh, happens all the time okay so e as you know uh, there is a, a shortage of electricity in pakistan right so uh, if if we can somehow find a way to maximize uh, the use of our electricity while uh, minimizing uh, the actual electricity we use that that would be very very nice here is a sort of uh, basic problem that we usually have. So we want to lit up a room. So we want to fix, let's say, uh, hu we have a huge hall and we want to uh, have some, let's say, tube lights in, in it or some energy savers or whatever, or lamps, whatever you want to call them. Uh, but you, want, you don't want to put a light um, in every corner and every, uh, let's say, uh, after every one foot fit of the room. Uh, that would be too much light. We just want to have the uh, just the right amount of light uh, but we also want to use the less possible electricity. That's, that's, uh, that's the kind of thing every Pakistani should be thinking. Right? So we don't have enough electricity so let's, let's maximize our, our uh, whatever we have. So let's maximize the use of whatever we have. So um, mathematics can help you Mathematics can help you uh, decide uh, how can you, uh, let's say, put your lamps in the room uh, such that the uh, you will have enough uh, light in all of your room while you use the minimum power. So you want to put some rooms in a huge area, let's say a hall. Um, every lamp has a total power limit, you, you know that. Uh, every tube light has has a certain watts. Every energy saver has certain watts. So it, there is a there is a capacity to every every electrical item that we use. So it will produce a finite amount of of light. Okay. Um, uh, several points in a room have a desired illumination level. Right. For example, there is a part of the room where you usually work. Okay. So there is uh, you have a computer desk there. You have your working desk. So you will. Uh, you will need more light there and if you if you let's say sleep in a part of room you don't really need too much light there okay so that's the every um, part of the room should have a certain desire desired illumination level for example there is a sitting place in in your room uh, where you invite your guests and they sit there uh, usually people like um, the sitting space to have more light right so uh, you can fix, you, you can um, already provide that this area should have this much light. Okay? So all of these conditions can be taken into, into consideration. So uh, how much power you, should you apply to each lamp uh, to get as close as possible to desired level? Okay? So you have to uh, provide the power to each lamp and also uh, maybe you you, sh you are also want to think about you don't want to use too many lamps, right? So uh, still you want to uh, obtain the desired level of lighting in your in your room. Okay, so here are a couple of more constraints that you can add. Um, if you have let's say uh, a certain amount of power available, you should not you should not. Um, assign more than half of the light to let's say five lamps if you have five lamps uh, which are f uh, fixed in your key areas let's say near your working table in your uh, living space for example uh, then you should not provide them more than 50 percent of the of the electricity available uh, you should provide them you can provide the maximum 50 percent or less than that and also 
you can also apply another restriction that you don't want to turn on more than 15 lamps that's 15 lamps is already uh, a lot lot of let's say lights turned on because uh, they will use a lot of electricity so we we say that no more than 15 lights will be turned on at the same time so that we can let's say save electricity okay so you want to again optimize the solution of this problem while taking into consideration all these these things so your constraints are for example uh, you cannot turn on more than more than 15 percent of the 15 lamps the, your second constraint your second condition is that uh, you should provide desired level of lighting to certain areas okay so every area should have its desired level of lighting and it, the third condition the first area is you should not provide more than half of the electricity to to five lamps uh, okay so that's that's these are the three conditions but what what are what is your desired objective you want to light up all the room to the level you want okay so that's that's the um, another engineering problem that we can solve using optimization and that mm, these are the kind of problems we will also talk about in this course okay there is another problem uh, you are familiar with world world health council so it's a medical team distribution problem they usually send medical teams to uh, to underdeveloped uh, countries right so there are world health or uh, council or organization teams uh, that are sent to certain uh, underdeveloped countries uh, they go there and set up medical camps and help the the people in need so uh, there are only five teams available five medical teams available so in each medical team you can probably say there will be a couple of doctors there will be a nurse there will be a helping staff and uh, there will be there will be transportation staff so all of these these people will be will be in a medical team right so you have to allocate five teams to three different countries okay so you, there are only five teams available and there are three countries that you need to send send the teams to okay right so um, first thing first that you cannot assign partial teams or partial people of course this is true you cannot send a half a person but you can also not break up the team because every member of the team is important to the team if you if you take away one person from the team that team is not is not uh, functional in the same way it it was before because every single person which which is part of the team has a specific purpose that it has the person has to fulfill uh, because he's a part of the team so you cannot assign partial teams if you are sending two teams to one country then you have to send two teams right so you cannot send let's say uh, one and a half team that doesn't make sense okay uh, the second restriction is each team added gains more person years of life saved in the country so if you send one team to one country it will save lives okay it will probably save lives if you send two teams to certain uh, country then it will probably save more lives but the um, here is a table which tells you that there are three countries one two three and there are number of teams one two three four five teams okay so if you send one team to country one it will save 45 lives okay if you send two teams uh, sorry if you send one team to country two it will save 20 lives if you send one team to country three it will save 50 lives okay so now if you only look at this uh, table and its uh, second third row uh, you can you will probably say if we send all the teams to country 3 it will save more lives but the problem is lives in country 1 and country 2 are equally important so you want to save uh, the maximum possible lives but you also want uh, to serve the three countries because uh, you cannot just ignore uh, the lives of the people of one country okay but if you look at the second uh, 
sorry fourth row uh, the row with with the two written there uh, you will see that if you send two teams to country one it will save 70 lives if you save two teams to 45 uh, to country two it will save 45 lives if you send two teams to country three it will save 70 lives now if you send two teams to country one and country three it's it's the same thing okay because uh, it so it will save uh, 70 lives in country one it will save 30 70 lives in country uh, country let's say three okay but if you just move on to the last row uh, if you send all five teams to country two it will save 150 lives country two 150 lives but country one 120 lives country three 130 lives so before you are thinking you should not send anyone to country two because uh, they will only save 20 lives but now you are saying if you send all of them to country two they will save 150 lives let's say or these these are in thousands right so 150,000 lives okay so now you have a decision to make right so what what are the number of teams you should send to country one country two country three that the total lives saved total lives saved are maximum so you want this is not this is not a uh, let's say um, a very um, simple problem you are talking about saving lives right so this is this is not something we can ignore okay so you you want to send the optimal number of people to the best possible number of people uh, teams to each country that the number of lives saved are are maximum okay but you should not ignore the lives of of the people of one country and uh, prefer the lives of the people of the other country you should send people to all of these three countries okay right so that's another restriction so you want to optimize the number of lives saved you want to um, uh, optimize how many teams you should send to each country and so basically you want to send the minimum number of teams and you want to save the maximum number of lives and you also um, want to send at least one team to each country and you also uh, cannot uh, partially send a team okay so th these are your restrictions and you should also uh, be a your objective is to save the most number of lives so that's 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 the problem okay so th this is another optimization problem maximizing one thing minimizing other thing maximize men minimize certain quantities that's optimization okay um, another problem problem four inventory levels so that's probably the last problem we'll talk about um, in today's lecture so there is a whole a wholesale bicycle distributor it doesn't have to be a bicycle distributor it's just just one example so there is there is a uh, let's say wholesale distributor of let's say rice or a wholesale distributor of let's say wheat or a wholesale distributor of let's say motorcycles cars uh, whatever you want to call it right so there are many wholesale businesses and wholesale distributors in each country okay so what what this particular wholesale distributors does is it purchases bikes from manufacturer and supplies to many shops so uh, there is a bike manufacturer I don't know uh, I, whichever company you prefer uh, if it's a motorcycle maybe you want to say Honda so there is and uh, there is a manufacturer of bikes and this wholesale distributor distributor buys bikes from in bulk from the manufacturer and supplies them to many shops many uh, retail shops in 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 let's say a certain city for example rawalpindi okay so uh, it purchases bikes from manufacturer and supplies to many shops um the demand to each shop is uncertain right so that's that's kind of uh, clear because you don't know when a customer will come and buy buy a bicycle you cannot predict that uh, but maybe there people buy more bikes in in summer and people buy less bikes in winter for example because in winter it's very cold so it's very hard to ride a bike but in in summer it's usually and uh, if even 
uh, it's very warm but in the evenings you can definitely ride bikes and you can exercise on them and whatever okay so uh, maybe in if you live in a foreign country then you just basically need a bike because uh, if you don't have a bike well then probably you will not uh, be very mobile uh, you have you have to use the buses and everything but if you have a bike then you you are usually very mobile okay so so demand is definitely uncertain you cannot predict when customers will come and buy bicycles from retail shop so you cannot predict the orders uh, that you will get from from those shops the wholesale distributor cannot predict the orders but of course uh, when when someone comes and asks for let's say 100 bikes from him he should be able to deliver because if he doesn't deliver he will go to some other distributor and buys from him and he will lose in revenues and hence lose in profits so he has to he has to consider certain parameters um, there are parameters first parameter is he should have enough bikes stored so that he can meet the needs of the people needs of the uh, of his retail businesses okay uh, the shops where he supplies those bikes okay then uh, there are certain limitations on him he is buying them from, from a manufacturer so he has to pay them okay so maybe he he only has a finite number of money finite amount of money as we all usually have all right so he maybe only have a let's say 200000 rupees that's that's all that's all he can spend okay so there are there is only a fixed number of bikes that he can purchase but he has only 200000 rupees he cannot just go and ask the manufacturer just give me bikes for 200000 rupees that's not how a business is run because there are other cost he has to have a warehouse where he's, he stores all these bikes, right? So if his warehouse doesn't have the capacity to store, store let's say, the bikes, he, uh, let's say 200 bikes that he purchases for 200 rupees, then uh, he has to probably hire another warehouse. There'll be cost. He doesn't want to bear that cost. So he has to make sure that he doesn't order too much that he cannot store. Um, similarly, there is there is a shortage cost if he doesn't have enough he will not sell enough and he will not have enough sales and eventually he will lose money okay so if he doesn't have enough then when an order comes he will not be able to deliver the order so he has to have enough that he can fulfill the orders uh, he must not exceed the holding cost he must also not uh, get too much um, too much bogged down into uh, paying uh, let's say f for another warehouse he just want to store the bikes that he can store in his existing warehouse and also he has to pay the ordering cost to manufacture he has to pay the money because he's buying something so all of these factors taken into consideration he has to decide how many bikes he should buy that he will be able to fulfill the demands uh, in the best possible way he will be able to fulfill the demands of his customers his retail customers and uh, while he he has to minimize his cost that's that's probably the problem that has been explained to you okay so um, we have discussed four problems uh, that can be solved using optimization these four problems are discussed in detail but these are not the only optimization problems that that exist in real life here is here is a, a list of optimization problems that we can solve but this is not the complete list by any way this is this is only a short uh, list of of some uh, problems that we can solve there is a huge long list that that we can incorporate here so here is a list of some of the problems that can be solved using optimization okay finding the shortest route um, I think we we developed on it a little bit that we want to get from from let's say Islamabad to Lahore uh, maybe there are two routes available let's say you can either take the motorway or you can take the GT road 
and for, let's say on the GT road, you can either go from the cities or you can go uh, outside the, all the cities that, that come into, into your way. Okay, so shortest route is probably GT road, but that's not the quickest, definitely not the quickest because there is more traffic on, um, well, maybe it's, it's the quickest as well if there is less traffic. Uh, but um, you may not want to take the GT road. You just want the quickest route. Maybe at certain times the motorway is the quickest route to get to from from Islamabad to Lahore. It's definitely not the shortest, but it may be the quickest. Okay, so you have to you have to um, be careful. What what are what is your objective? You want to uh, save fuel, or you want to save time? So whichever is your objective, you will decide your route accordingly. Okay, and then uh, this, these are not the only route problems. You also want to um, find the best route under desired conditions. For example, you want to go from Islamabad to Lahore, but you want to go through Gujranwala because you have to drop something in Gujranwala. They, you have to visit a relative in Gujranwala. You have to pick someone up from Gujranwala and then go to Lahore. So now you cannot, for example, take uh, take uh, the motorway because if you want to go from uh, from motorway to Gujranwala, that's 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 a very very long way. Okay, so you will then uh, you will then have to be careful. What what is your route? So your route may may have to satisfy certain desired conditions which are already set. Um, you can. And this is this is the root problem, and I'm giving you very basic example. But this this root problem is is one of the most fundamental problems in optimization theory, and it's also one of the most fundamental problems faced to every company and every person that that lives around. For example, if you have, uh, uh, let's say, you talk about TCS, for example, TCS TCS is a company which delivers goods and packages in Pakistan. So a TCS person uh, wants to uh, start from, from his pickup point and go to, let's say, a certain place. But he cannot just say, I want to go from this place to that place and I have to just uh, deliver that package. This is not how it works. He has to go from one place to another place, but he has to make many stops along the way. Okay. So he has to many stops, makes many stops along the way. So in his case, the requirements are all packages must be delivered. And also, there are many other conditions. For example, uh, some packages have to be delivered before the others because uh, let's say there, are, there, is, there is usually a service that your package will be delivered before 1 p.m. So whatever happens, the package has to be delivered before 1 p.m. So he, has, he cannot go to all other places before delivering that package. So that's another condition on him. But it's a huge company, right? So they, they, they want to maximize their resources. They, they just don't want to sell 100 people out in, in the city and just, just go and deliver the packages. And you can just, just take as many people as you like and take as many vehicles as you like. This is not how it works. So they have to, uh, they have a limited workforce. They have to use that workforce. They have to minimize the production, uh, the uh, transportation cost, the fuel cost. Uh, it's it's uh, probably one of the uh, biggest overhead costs that a company has, right? Uh, a distribution company has. Okay, so. Choosing the best possible route which satisfies the desired conditions is important. Desired conditions, packages have to be delivered on time. You have to deliver all the packages. Certain packages must be delivered before the others. Right? So these are all, all the desired conditions on, on, on your route. Okay. Then you have to make an investment decision. You have a certain amount of money and you want to spend it. Uh, right so you have to spend it wisely of course i will i'll um, explain these again in in the next lecture uh, uh, we are sort of running a uh, short of time so you can also minimize the risk on profit you can maximize the stock you can uh, d design an aeroplane with minimum weight and desired capacity uh, you want to best uh, 
utilize your resources in the best possible way, optimize production within the constraints, minimize labor while obtaining desired results. You can also deploy an army to minimize damage by, our, by an enemy attack, for example. So all of these are optimization problems. And many more problems can be added to the list, right? So this is not an exhaustive list, definitely not an exhaustive list, okay? So um, if you look uh, through all of these problems, these are the problems that we face in real life, okay? So when we um, start the course formally, you will be able to understand that yeah, so this is the problem that relates to me. So how can I solve it using mathematics? So these are the kind of questions that you should be asking. And these are the sort of questions that we will be answering. Okay. So um, in the end, I'll just summarize what we have done uh, today. Right, summary. So what we have done today. We have talked uh, about what, we, what is optimization and what will be uh, in the course of optimization. Okay. Uh, we have also uh, talked about some very basic concepts of optimization and what are the sort of problems that we, we will be dealing in, in this course uh, of optimization. So optimization very roughly is effective decision making. Okay? So you have to make the best possible decision which s satisfies your objective and it also satisfies your desired conditions. So whatever the conditions on, on your requirement are. Uh, the sort of conditions which we have mentioned uh, with, with certain problems. So optimization is effective decision making. Choosing the best possible option among the options available to you. Okay? Or it's, it's, the, it's the art of uh, uh, making policies uh, that satisfies objectives and also satisfies certain conditions. So this is optimization. We then talked about certain problems that can be solved using optimization um, some of the problems are familiar to you, everyday problems. Uh, we uh, made a list of uh, many problems that you can attack using optimization. Of course, uh, transforming those real life problems into mathematics and then solving them. Okay. In the next lecture, we will uh, start our course formally and we will uh, look into some mathematical tools that we'll be using and formally define what is an optimization problem and how can we transform a real life problem into an optimization problem and then we'll look into their solutions. Okay, uh, thank you very much for your time and attention and hopefully I'll see you again in the next lecture. Thank you very much.